Hi guys, welcome back. Can you believe it's already the end of May? That is just crazy to me. I'm just sitting out here on the grass in the walkway in my garden. You can see it's all behind me. I've got arugula bolting back there, but that's fine because it's still nice and edible. Even when it's bolted, I don't really notice a difference. And everything's just growing really, really well. I hope your garden's also doing great right now. We haven't gotten rain in a while, but everything still seems to be super green, so I can't complain. I can't complain about one thing though, and that's what I want to talk about in this video, is something that I am currently really struggling with in my garden, and I'm, I'm sitting in front of it. It's these broad beans right here. But first I want to mention that I know I don't always show my whole garden in these videos, so if you want to see more like day-to-day -day updates on what's looking good and what I'm harvesting and what's going on in here, uh, follow me over on Instagram. I'm Grove Permaculture over on Instagram. So anyway, without further ado, let's talk about the struggle I'm having. Um, basically, <laughs> I'm struggling with aphids on my broad beans, but not just aphids on my broad beans. The real problem is that I have ants farming aphids on my broad beans and this is something that i can't find very much information about um i see a lot of talk in the organic gardening and permaculture circles about aphids in the garden and uh how if you let nature take its course the predator bugs like ladybugs will show up and hunt your aphids so as you can see here the aphids on my broad beans are quite extensive and it's um, honestly kind of disgusting and there's ants on there farming the aphids yeah it's kind of gross that's one there's another one back here that's like this basically every broad bean plant has this happening and there's some more you get the picture. Basically, you've got big clusters of black aphids and ants keeping the aphids there and farming them. And then the same thing's happening over here in my second patch of broad beans. So the ones that I showed you first were started inside and transplanted out. And the ones over here were direct sown. So it doesn't seem to make a difference whether you start them inside or you direct sow them they're absolutely completely covered. The other reason this is a problem for me is that we already have quite a large volume of ants on this property. And so when the predator bugs like ladybugs show up to try to eat the aphids, what I've read is that the ants will actually fight off the good predator bugs and to continue farming their aphids basically because the ladybugs are like a threat to the ants and their aphid farm. <laughs> so, Here's the deal though, it's not just on the broad beans, it's also, last year it happened on my Asian pear tree, uh, this year it's happening on my honeyberry bushes. So in case you haven't been around here for a while, um, I don't tend to spray in my garden, I'm a bit of like a live and let live pest person, I kind of just observe what's going on and wait for nature to kind of take its course. Um, but because I live in the suburbs and we don't have a completely functional ecosystem here because of how much it's been developed and changed, I know that you can't always rely on the good bugs and the predators to come and fix pest issues. So that leads me to the challenge of what should I do about this? And that's kind of why I'm making this video is I hope that we can have a discussion in the comments. Um, when I posted this question in some of the groups I'm in, some of the recommendations I get are like, uh, kill the ants. <laughs> and I'm not a huge fan of that idea because I don't think that's really a sustainable uh, practice to just, you know, be poisoning the ants every year. I'd rather not do that. That doesn't feel good to me. Uh, the other things I say are like, I see are uh, things like diatomaceous earth, which is basically like a really scratchy powder that you can put into your soil that the ants will eat and bring back to their nests and it hurts them and does eventually kill them. So people are like, oh, diatomaceous earth, it's an organic solution, but it doesn't matter to the ants, it still kills the ants. I'd kind of rather a natural predator kill the ants than me mixing poison or diatomaceous earth into my soil, but I'm sort of running out of options, so I'm not really sure what to do there. 
I also am not super well informed on what the other predators are for ants. I know that birds eat ants. Um, I know that if an ant is already injured or dead, things like wasps, like scavenger kind of bugs will eat ants. But this is something that the internet doesn't seem to have a lot of information on, at least from the Googling I've been doing. Everybody's just telling me to kill the ants. So if you have any knowledge on what natural predators ants have, please share them. Would it be helpful to encourage more birds into my garden to eat the ants? Uh, are there any ways I could encourage more predator bugs to come eat the aphids? Uh, any predators you know of that can win against the ants? Or are there any predators specifically of ants? Oh, and I do already have stuff in my garden to encourage birds to come in. I have a bird bath over there, right up there. Um, I've planted native shrubs in the corner. Um, they haven't grown up yet, so I guess they're not really great habitat yet, but my neighbors also have blackberry thickets that the birds love to live in. And there's some more over there. And I do actually see quite a lot of birds in the garden. We get stellar jays, we get crows, uh, starlings, robins, towies. Yeah, we get lots of birds. There's sort of a saying in permaculture that's like the problem is the solution, and the example they always use is an abundance of slugs um, means abundant food for ducks. And then they also use that for aphids sometimes, where they say, oh, an abundance of aphids means you'll get ladybugs to eat your aphids. But that doesn't seem to really be working for me right now because an abundance of aphids is coming from the ants farming the aphids and then the ladybugs show up and the ants fight off the ladybugs. So now I'm kind of like, okay, we're in this vicious loop of there's aphids and then the ants show up and then there's more aphids so the ants show up more and then there's more aphids like it's a it's a positive feedback loop of ants and aphids um and so i'm just really stuck with what to do now so do i pull out my broad beans because they're covered in aphids and ants and i don't think i'm really gonna get um, a harvest off of them they're not looking really good like the aphids you know suck the juices out of the plants and weaken them and then they don't make very good beans um, or do I leave them in as a trap crop to keep aphids off of my other plants something I've also been thinking about is maybe broad beans are not just just not something I can grow in this garden without this problem happening and I should just use it next year to my advantage by planting a patch of broad beans like somewhere else away from my garden to attract the aphids and the ants and to keep them away from the rest of my garden beds. Something that's really interesting that I've noticed actually is that normally when I don't grow broad beans like this is my first year growing broad beans in this this garden at least um, I normally have aphids all over my nasturtiums, but this year my broad beans are right here covered in aphids. And then on the other side of me right here, I have nasturtiums, not a single aphid, no aphids whatsoever. So that leads me to believe that the aphids like the broad beans more than they like the nasturtiums. And so that tells me that broad beans would be a better trap crop for my garden than nasturtiums. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for today. It's a pretty short video, just basically explaining something I'm struggling with right now, hoping that somebody else has also struggled with this, but made it through to the other side and figured out what to do about it. I would really love to hear your experience with aphids and ants farming the aphids in your garden and how you dealt with it in an organic way or a sustainable way or uh, some way that you know, follows ecological gardening principles or permaculture principles, anything in that vein, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. It would be super, super helpful. Thank you in advance. And uh, I hope you're having a great gardening season so far, and I'll see you next time. Bye.